President Mnangagwa has arrived in Uganda where he is expected to attend the Non-Aligned Movement Summit as well as the G77 Plus China Summit. The President, who has been on leave since late December last year, will take the opportunity to realign with all friendly nations while also furthering the country's economic interests. We get more from Kuda Mugari. President uh... Emerson Mdangagwa has arrived in Uganda for the 19th Summit of Heads of States and Government of the Non-Aligned Movement, NAM, and the third summit of the Group of 77 and China 77. He was welcomed at Entebbe International Airport by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Trade, Ambassador Frederick Shaba, who was in the advanced team and attended several NAM preparatory meetings during the week. The President is among the over 30 heads of state and government who are attending the summits. Or in, or in or Uganda is expecting around 1,500 delegates to attend the summit. And the president is also expected to address the summit uh, tomorrow morning. Representatives of organized labor have called for United States dollar indexed salaries to safeguard workers against inflation. This was discussed at the tripartite negotiating forum social dialogue retreat taking place in Victoria Falls. The strategic planning workshop happening under the theme social dialogue for nation building started on Monday. Japanese government has poured 1 million United States dollars in a project to train women in Zimbabwe, Zambia and Tanzania to sustain sustain green livelihoods. The six months training is beginning to, and beginning to be facilitated by the United Nations Institute for Training and Research. Participants of the project met with their trainers in Harare today. More in the following report. Africa is one of the most hard hit continents by climate change, although its contribution to the phenomenon is very little. With help from the United Nations, Female entrepreneurs in Zimbabwe are now taking initiatives that minimize or adapt to the adverse effects of climate change on the continent. We are developing green uh, livelihoods projects and the target group is women and youth coming in from Tanzania, from Zambia and from Zimbabwe. The women drawn from sectors such as agriculture and waste management are trained to find sustainable ways to run their businesses. Not only is this kinder on the environment, but it reduces their business costs too. Instead of using an electric-powered um, vegetable dryer, we are now using a solar-powered dryer. So it's saving us on our CSA bill. Communities where these businesses operate from are also reaping the benefits of green livelihoods. My business is uh, focused, it's a business model that is focused um, at land rehabilitation, land rehabilitation in the communal lands of Chota. This program has been instrumental to my personal growth and to the growth of my community where I come from because I learned how to merge uh, business goals, that is profit making as well as environmental uh, goals. The United Nations Institute for Training and Research, which is facilitating the training, believes capacitating women and youth will positively impact development in Africa. Africa is a young continent. If you look on the, the demographics, the women and the youth is, is, represents a large part of, of, the, of the population. So they, they, if you are able to develop them, they will be able to contribute to development, economic and social development of any country in the region. A total of 2.5 million hectares have so far been planted against a target of 3.1 million in the 2023-2024 summer cropping season, official figures show. According to a weekly report released by the Ministry of Agriculture on Wednesday, farmers across the country are continuing with planting following the heavy rains being recorded. Last year, the World Meteorological Organization, WMO, warned of El Nino conditions that could severely impact farm output in Zimbabwe and some regional countries in the 2023-2024 summer farming season. The Zimbabwe senior women's cricket team started their three-match one-day international series against Ireland on a low note as they lost by 10 wickets in the opening encounter played at Harare Sports Club earlier today. After rain delayed the start of the match, the Lady Chevrons posted 170 all-out in 42.5 overs with Ashley Ndira 
Raya top scoring with 47 runs from 53 deliveries. The target was then reduced to 110 runs in 21 overs and the Lady Chevron's bowling department failed to deal with the Ireland opening pair of Army Hunter and Gaby uh, Lewis who made sure that the visitors reached the promised land in just 13.1 overs.